the headline this morning. Council rejects airport, recreation, uh, property tax hikes. It was a rather lively meeting, though many residents uh, weren't in attendance, but mm-hmm. uh, but a lot happened. Uh, joining us on the phone uh, to help Bernadette Dudley continue her tradition of transparency in local government, Jay Castile, and this is Lafayette Live. And there you were, Jay, just thinking it was a regular old interview. <laughs> good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Good, good. So, all right. So let's talk about what did and didn't happen last night. Let's kick it off. Before we get to anything else, I do want to ask you about uh, the rates for LUS. So what was decided with that particular issue? Uh, what, what's going to happen is uh, Mr. Uval is going to use the fuel charges that we have in excess for the first year that we, you know, we don't burden our residents with uh, an increase in utility rates at a time like this. Um, then the second year, he'll kick in the increase, and then third year, he'll have his, his final increase uh, to move forward with his projects. Interesting. Okay. So it won't happen this first year? He'll use Correct. something that he's already got kind of within his budget. Then next year it kicks in, and the following year, does it split it up at like 4.5% or what what happens? Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's a total of 9%. He's going to split yeah. it up into two years, so you're 4.5% each year. I think that's okay. what he's looking at doing. Okay. All right. And then let's go back to, um, you know, the lively discussion, because it was. And, I mean, and there are questions all around about what what to do with the millages and rolling forward and, and some that, that we're going to get extra revenue from and some that we're not. All right. So as far as things like the airport and the library system, um, that got voted down. Correct. Yes. Now, one – okay, so one that that you were talking about that um, the airport tax, this is one that, that actually Rob and I were talking about this morning, earlier this morning. The ordinance to increase the airport tax, um, you know, would have needed six votes. You, Bruce Conk, Nanette Cook, Kevin Nakia, Kenneth Boudreaux were saying, yeah, we probably should do this, increase the, the airport tax to 1.71 mils, but it, it was voted down. Why were you in favor of that? Well, the airport has a large project on the way. Uh, you know, they have debt service, and it's a it's $90 million project, and I felt that, you know, they need everything that, that they ha- they can get to go ahead and, and give us a good product and, and and turn this airport into an airport that can compete. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but if we roll back their tax uh, that they're expecting, you know, to, to collect to continue this, this project, um, you know, we hampering their ability to, to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that, that was my reason. Now, what about, so several failed, several of these issues failed, several um, did actually go forward to increase millages, things for like, uh, streets, roads, and alleys. Can you tell us like a little bit about that and also uh, the millages for the city and the fire departments? Yeah, uh, those move forward. Um, the roads and the, and, and, and the drainage millages, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we just experienced a horrific flood. And so, you know, I expected those millages to continue to move forward. Uh, fire and police millages, uh, that's, that's our first line of protection between us, you know, between that and chaos. So uh, you got to fund those guys fully and make sure they, they're operational. And, and the ones that failed, um, the library tax, I think they can, they can, you know, they'll be, they can work within their budget. Uh, they have a pretty good fund balance for this year. They, I think they can make it work. Now there's a couple of them that I know for sure. I don't know what we're going to do as far as for the, the, the uh, correctional facility and, and recreation. Yeah. Cause you know, we're looking at just the recreation cut that was forced on us last night is $365,000 from the correctional center and it's already underfunded and we're already subsidizing it and subsidizing recreation, uh, big time out of our budget, our parity budget. So I, I don't know what's going to happen, um, to those two. Uh, it just, it just worries me that, you know, we cut back on the, on the correctional facility. Um, if they can't operate because 365,000 is a lot of money. And if they got a, you know, turn prisoners away because we can't we can't feed them, we can't give them their medicine. Uh, we're going to be in trouble. I mean, that, that's those people will be on the streets, and then then what we have, you know. So we got to be careful when we we vote to to roll back these things. Nobody likes taxes to start off with. You know, I, I, yeah. like I said last night I have three businesses and I own property. I'm getting hit pretty good, and, and but I understand the process. 
the services that are needed. Um, we have a demand set on government to, to provide services, but yet we have some who say, look, no more taxes. We had enough. Don't do it. We don't want to pay any more taxes. Mm-hmm. But then you won't get any more services. I mean, that's just that's just a fact of life. Yeah, the, the, I, I do have to say the correctional facility, that one did kind of surprise me a bit. The library, uh, excuse me, recreation, not so much. Do you think, I don't know, do you think the mindset about parks and recreation might be changing somewhat? Well, I'm not sure the mindset in the, in, in the public's eyes changing. Um, everyone's kids, you know, they, they play baseball, they play football and soccer. Um and that's what that millage provides for, and you, you you cut it back, and then that means you have less money to operate. You have less programs for the kids to, mm-hmm. to, to get off the streets and, 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 you know, stay out of trouble and, and try to do some good. So, you know, I don't know if it's changing. It's just the mindset of people in taxes is, is, is um, right now, it's a popular thing. You know, let's, let's cut taxes, let's cut taxes. I pay enough taxes. You know, Lafayette Parish is probably one of the lowest property taxes in the, in the state. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a fact. That's just a proven fact. So, uh, and, and, and Millage is a, it's a stable tax base for those those issues like recreation and, and the detention center and, you know, those things like that. Okay, so what do you think now? Um, what What happens from this point, I guess, in particular on recreation and on the cuts for the uh, correctional facility? Well, uh, Thursday night we're supposed to adopt the budget. Mm-hmm. So between now and Thursday night, you we have to find. Yeah, y'all are gonna have to figure uh, it out. Expenses. We got to cut out these expenses. Uh, you know, recreation is two hundred twenty-three thousand. We got to go cut it again. And he took a three million dollar cut in the budget. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now we got to go back and try to find expenses in the correctional center, and, and make those cuts. Uh, I don't think the administration is gonna come down with anything because they send us a balanced budget. So it's going to be up to the council to go in there and, and try to fix it. Anything off the top of your head that you can say, oh, well, we could at least look at this or not really? Not in those two areas. Yeah. Not not, yeah. not correctional facility or uh, recreation. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't see anything that, that uh, to tell you the truth, they, they're, all, they're bare bone now. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what, what's going to happen. Okay. Well, obviously, we will keep monitoring it. Uh, Jay Castile, chairman of the Lafayette City Parish Council, has been joining us. Thank you for a very frank discussion. We appreciate your time, Jay. Thank you.